Alright, um, so today what I'm going to be showing you how to do is uh, two kinds of t-tests. Um, the first is a one sample um, t-test which is the same as a large sample means test that we learned to do in class um, because our sample size is 161. So if you haven't done so already what you need to do is open up your homeless person's 161 data set um, and you need to get to this screen here so you should click on variable view and the first thing we're going to do is identify a variable that is appropriate for us to look at a mean for so I'm gonna look at this support from relative scale and the way I'm gonna decide if it's appropriate to be used for a um, means test is I'm gonna look at the level of measurement and you can see that it has a scale level of measurement so it should be appropriate to use a means test but let's look at the descriptives on this first before we do anything. So if you remember, the way we do that is we go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and you can go to Frequencies or Descriptives, either one. I'm going to go to Frequencies, and then I'm going to look for the support from relative scale. I've already put it in the box, but if you haven't done that, the way we do that is we just click the support from relative scale and click to put it over in the box. Then we click our statistics and select all of these if you haven't done so already. And once again, this is going to tell us the standard deviation, variance, range, minimum, maximum, and the standard error. That's what SE mean means um, around the calculated mean. So now I'm going to click continue. I'm going to uncheck display frequency tables because I'm not really interested in that. And then I'll click OK. And out comes a uh, descriptives table. Now this is what you'll need to do in order to develop the descriptives for part one of your statistics report and you'll need to be able to talk about the mean um, which I haven't actually displayed here so let's go back and rerun that with the mean. So if we go into frequencies and click statistics you can see that I clicked all the dispersion statistics but I forgot to click the mean median and mode so when you're running this for your part one of your statistics report, you need to include mean, median, mode, and then all the dispersion statistics. So I'm going to click continue and click OK. So now we can see that the mean score on the support for relative scale was 4.18, and we can see that had a standard error of 0.231. And you can use that to find the confidence intervals, or you can do what I'm about to do, and that'll, that'll be a little bit better. Um, but you'll need to look at the mean, median, and mode to talk about the spread of the variable. And then you're also going to want to look at the standard deviation, range, minimum, and maximum. So you can see this scale has a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 9, but there is a interval ratio quality to it, so it's appropriate to use a t-test. So now that I've looked at the descriptive statistics, and I can tell you a little bit about this variable, um, I want to analyze it to see if it um, is different from a population mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to compare means from the analyze tab and I'm going to click on the one sample t-test. That's going to be our one sample means test that we've covered in, in class. And you can see I've already put support from relatives in as our test variable. Um, it is going to ask you for a test value. Now that's where you're going to put the expected population value that we would do um, in, in the uh, manual calculations. So when you're doing this on paper, you te you're testing the mean from a sample against an expected mean. That's what your test value is. Um, I've put in six just as an example. Um, it doesn't really mean anything, but for, for the purposes of the exercise, I'm going to say that the population average score on the support from relative scale is a six out of nine. And I want to know if amongst this homeless population sample, if support from relatives is actually lower. So I'm going to put in that test value of 6 here, make sure my test variable is in the box. Um, you can click options and you can set your confidence interval percentage. Now that's um, going to change the confidence interval that's actually calculated um, from the test. Um, and then you can look at this missing values box, but you don't really need to do anything with it because this is this is for kind of advanced analyses. 
So unless you have a really good reason to change it, um, I would leave the confidence interval percentage at 95 and then click OK. And you'll see, first of all, that it shows you the sample size. Um, it shows that the sample size for this test was 159, so that means two of our cases didn't have a score that they could use. And then you see the mean standard deviation and standard error with the mean displayed here as well. And then in this one sample test, you can see the test value selected. Um, you can see the t-score that was calculated, so we can see that um, our mean that we we found in the sample was 7.853 standard errors lower than what could be expected if the null hypothesis is true. The null hypothesis being that the sample we're looking at has the same mean support from relatives as the general population. Um, and then it's going to show you the degrees of freedom for the test, which is 158, one lower than the sample size. And then you see this column that says significance two-tailed. Now this is going to be the p-value for a two-tailed test. It's going to give you a two-tailed test p-value by default. And if you want to know what the significance value for the one-tailed test would be, then you need to div divide that value by two. In this case, the p-value is 0 .000 to begin with, so we know we're going to reject the null hypothesis. This is much lower than 0.05. Um, it also gives us the raw mean difference, which is our test effect. So we can see that the mean for this sample was 1.818 lower than our test value. So 4.18 was that much lower than 6. And then it's also going to show you a 95% confidence interval of the difference. Now this is the confidence interval for the difference between our mean and uh, the sample and the uh, excuse me and the expected mean so it's saying that we're 95 percent confidence that our sample has a mean that is at that is between 2.27 and 1.36 points lower than six okay so that should tell you everything you need to know to do a one sample test in SPSS. Now to do a two sample test in the SPSS, which we're going to be covering this week in class, you're going to click the analyze button, you're going to go to compare means, and you're going to go to the independent samples t-test. Okay? Once you've done that, you have two boxes. Your test variable box is where your dependent variable goes. In this case, we're going to pretend we're still looking at support from relatives. And let's say our research question is we want to know if support from relatives is different for male homeless individuals versus female homeless individuals. So now we have two groups, two independent samples, men and women. So we're going to need to put a grouping variable in. So in this case our grouping variable is going to be gender. and we're going to define our groups. And I believe that the groups are defined as one and two, one being male, two being female. Okay, so that's telling us how what, where, what the subsamples are. So one is one sample, the male sample, two is the second sample, the female sample. We can click options. We're gonna have the same options we had last time, confidence interval, percentage, and missing values. Um, so we're going to leave that alone and click OK. OK, and this is a good teaching point. Because I didn't check to see what the values actually meant for the gender variable, I didn't know what to specify my groups as. So you see that I had females, but there's no value for the second value. So what I should have done is I should have run a descriptive statistic um, test on the gender variable first to see what the value labels were. Now I know that it's actually zero for male and one for female, but just so that you kind of can see what happens when you don't do the descriptives first, this is what happens. You end up with some meaningless results. So I'm going to go back up, click analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test, 
and I need to change my, my grouping variable. I needed to redefine my groups. So I know because I did the descriptives first that zero is male and one is female. Okay, so make sure that you do that with your grouping variable you're going to use for your statistics report so that you know what to put in as your grouping variables. So now when I click OK, I should get an actual test. Okay, so here we see that the means for male and female were 4.13 for male and 4.28 for female. So females actually seem to have slightly higher support from relatives. And we also see that their standard error is not terribly different. So as we're going to talk about today, um, this passes the equal variances test because the group of the larger variance does not have twice as large a variance as the, as the smaller group. Okay, and the way you would formally test that is you would take the standard deviation and you would square it for each of these. But I can kind of tell just from looking at this is we're going to be we're going to be all right. So you're going to see um, a couple of things in your box. First, you see a Levine's test for equality of variances. Now this is a formal test to see if it passed the equality of variances assumption. And because there's not a significance value or p-value of lower than 0 0.05, we're fine. Um, the only time that you're going to break the equality of variances assumption is if this Levine's test is less than 0 0.05. Um, don't worry too much about the F value for now. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about F values when we get to ANOVA, but it's, it's not really important for the scope of this class. So here you see um, the T-scores, degrees of freedom, significance two-tailed, and um, the lower and upper confidence intervals. You're going to see two sets of values for this. One is for equal variances assumed and one is for equal variances not assumed. Now if this had a value of 0 0.05 we would need to use the values from the equal variances not assumed row but because it doesn't have a value less than 0 0.05 we can use the equal variances assumed row. And So we see that there is a t-score um, or test statistic of negative 0.317 um, for our test. And what that means is that there is a 0 0.317 point difference between um, the standard errors for male and female. Okay? Or excuse me, once taking, taking into consideration standard error, there is a 0 0.317 standard errors difference between the means of males and the means of females. We can see our degrees of freedom is 157. For two samples, your degrees of freedom are two points lower than your total sample size. That's because one um, case for males and one case for females are not free to vary. And we'll talk more about that in class uh, this week. Um, we can see our p-value under the significance two-tailed value. Now, if we were predicting that one of these is going to be higher than the others. For example, if we believe that females had more support from relatives, we would cut this value in half to get our, our p-value for the test. But we can see that even if we did that, we would not have a p-value less than 0.05. So at this point, it looks like um, there is no real difference between male and female homeless individuals with regard to support from relatives. Um, and this shows the raw mean difference, so we can see that men have um, 0.153 lower scores um, on average than women do. Um, we can see the standard error for the difference and then a confidence interval for the difference. So the confidence interval for the difference shows that we are 95 percent confidence that the difference between men and women with regard to support from relatives is between negative 1.1 points and 0.803 points. And so what that shows us is that within our 95 confidence interval for the difference between men and women, it could be men are lower on the scale than women or men are higher than the scale 
than women. If both of these had the same sign, we'd be more likely to reject the null hypothesis because we'd be 95% confident that men were definitely lower or definitely higher than women. Um, don't worry too much about this box um, for what you're doing in, for your statistics report, um, but I want to give you the option of being able to learn more about it if you want. Um, so that's really it for this run through. Um, if you had any questions at all about how to do a one sample or a two sample t-test in SPSS, um, please feel free to email me and set up an appointment and I'll be happy to go through your output from SPSS and help you interpret it. Um, and otherwise, uh, good luck and I hope this is helpful.